Adobe Firefly now offers automated in-painting, which means that you can paint inside a selected region in one of two ways. First, you can remove an unwanted detail, and second, you can insert details according to a text prompt. Either way, you can upload your own custom image. Here's how. Here I am inside Photoshop looking at a photographic image. This is a real photograph from the Dreamstime Image Library. You want to learn more, it's in the description. And what I want to do is get rid of this pole through the middle of this central guy right here. And so I'm scrolling up just a little bit and I'm going to create a new layer by pressing Control Shift N, Command Shift N on the Mac. And I'll call this guy Spot Heel, let's say. And that's because that's, what, that's where we're going to start. I'll click OK. And I'll grab the spot healing brush over here in the toolbox. Now, notice up here in the options bar that I have type set to content aware fill. That means that I'm sampling from all over the current image. This image and no other image, by the way, as well as around the edges of my brush stroke. That's very important to understand. Notice that sample all layers is turned on as well. So, so where healing is concerned, spot healing anyway, this is state of the art inside Photoshop. And so what I'm going to do, again, where Photoshop is concerned, I'll go ahead and paint away the pole like so. And then I'll just fill in these regions here so I make sure I've painted away the entire pole down the ear, the ear as well. And it's not going to be all that fun. I mean, it's, you're not going to be very satisfied. This is what I'm trying to say. It's very fun in that we have a much larger ear now. However, the fact of the matter is, it's not only, again, I want to emphasize, it's not only sampling from all over the image, and that's all very well and good, but it is sampling around the brush stroke as well. And that same thing is going to happen down here if I paint the bottom portion of the pole away. Might do have a decent job with the grass. In fact, it does. But it duplicates the knee a little bit and duplicate some other element of some lamb somewhere. Anyway, at least it's on an independent layer. That's nice. So I'll turn that off, select the background layer. Now you can, now I'm going to use the content aware fill command, by the way, just to let you know where I'm going. You can waste a bunch of time masking if you wanted to, but the best way to work is just to grab the lasso tool where this kind of image is concerned. That means I am going to select into the hair, but you know, just try to do a halfway decent job is, is what I would have recommended in the past before what I'm about to show you. And then, oops, I, I messed it up because I just created a new selection. I want to shift drag down here in order to add to the selection like so. And then you could use some tools you know, object selection, that kind of thing, in order to deselect the hair, but it's not really going to do you any good. So I'm going to go up to the edit menu and choose content aware fill, this command right there. And it's an entire workspace. Of course, that's what it brings up. I'll go ahead and scroll over a little bit and I'll zoom in on the preview, take it up to 100% so we can really see what's going on. See around the ear, for example, and down here below uh, by the knee. And so it's a mess as things stand right now. Now you could say, well, part of the problem is it's duplicating the lamb. So let's just paint the lamb away and using this brush right here. And so it's default behavior is to paint away details that you don't want to see replicated. And that's going to do a better job. It's duplicating the grass up here. So we'd paint away the grass and that's still going to paint some, we, uh, you, you, can, you get the idea. You can spend a few more minutes, frankly, trying to paint away the grass and make sure that you're, you're not duplicating the wrong stuff, but we are duplicating in to the lamb. Now I showed uh, months ago. Now I showed how color adaptation works. You could play around with that, but we are going to output to a new layer. So that's good. So I could just go ahead and click. Okay. And now at this point I would mask I'd add a layer mask to this new layer, which I'm going to call CAF. And then I would try to mask away that stuff inside the lamb. But as you're about to see, that's way too much work going forward. So now I'm going to click down here because I want to show you something. The width of this image is 4,024 pixels. The height is 2,600. Do the math just one by uh, times the other. You just multiply those two values. And you'll find out that it's about 10 and a half megapixels. Now, some of you might have immediately yawned over that because that's not super high resolution where digital photography is concerned. It's wicked high resolution in the world of generative AI. Usually AI is topping out right now at about one, two or four megapixels, not 10, but we are going to go for 10 here. So I'll just go ahead and switch back to Firefly, click 
upload image, grab that image. It's a JPEG file. Click open in order to open it up. This is the one that's not healed, so I've got the poll. And now what you want to do is switch to remove. Insert's very interesting. I will show it to you in the future, but in this video, we're going to focus on remove, which removes an element that you don't want removes an unwanted element such as a pole. And now you have brush controls down here. Generally, you wanna leave hardness set to 100% as it is by default and opacity set to 100% as well. You can play around with that if you want to, but generally speaking, because of the way that this tool works, 100, 100 is the way to go. Size is of course entirely up to you. I'll just go ahead and take it down to 20, let's say 20%, I don't know percent of what, but anyway, I'll just go ahead and paint in that area. It's just gonna show up initially as a checkerboard transparency pattern because so far we haven't done anything. I'll go ahead and paint up into this region as well and down here, paint it too far, you can see into the lamb. And so I could switch to subtract to subtract from my brush stroke and I could paint this guy away a little bit. Notice that I'm not worried about the hairs. I could paint closer to the pole if I wanted to like so as well. Notice where this particular model and behavior is concerned, remove, when you, when you have this guy set to remove, you don't have to enter a prompt. It, it, basically, Firefly doesn't need your help. It's going to get everything from the image itself. Don't click clear, even though it's tempting because you want to clear out that pole, right? What you want to do is not worry about these guys either. Select background would select the entire background. You don't want that. Instead, just click remove. Now, it will take a few moments in order to do the work because, after all, it's working with remote servers. So your particular computer isn't being used for this purpose. You don't need a wicked fast graphic graphics card, for example, as things currently stand. So instead, this is all being done remotely. It will take a moment or two, but bear in mind that we're working on a 10 megapixel image. This is the first result that came up with way better than what we saw using anything inside Photoshop. Is that a good transition right there between this hair and th these hairs down here? Good knee though. I'm just asking, you know, is it? I don't know. That's better. I think that's a better uh, looking image right there. Try again. So we got four different images to choose from, as is traditional in the very recent world. There's nothing really traditional about generative AI, but still. And that's terrible because the grass is bad right there. So you want to keep an eye out for details as you're working right here. If you want to make a change to your mask, if you want to add to the mask, for example, you would click on edit mask. That's that brush stroke by the way. So if you wanted to brush in, if you're thinking like right there is not so good, click edit mask and you can paint in some more, not paint away. I'm in the subtract mode. I would want to add to this region right here. Just kind of give it a little bit of a variable sort of back and forth kind of brush. Then just go ahead and click on refresh in order to once again, reevaluate the imagery by the way. So it's going back to those remote servers and it's generating a bunch of high resolution pixels. Of course, the resolution of the pixels is the pixels themselves, but notice here's the first uh, thing that Firefly came up with this time around. Here's another one with a very tall blade of grass right here. And then we have three and four. So you just want to check them out. And you can do something like click done if you want to. I think I like the second one the best. Let's say I do. I like that kind of anomalous grass blade right there. And then what you would do is click download. And that might take a moment in order for, you know, Firefly to gain its senses here. Click continue. And then notice, I just want you to see that it is going to go ahead and save a ping file here. And so I'm just going to change the file name a little bit and I'll click save in order to save that image. And then I'll just go ahead and open it up inside Photoshop. I have ping files set to open in Photoshop automatically. And there it is in all of its 10 megapixel glory. Isn't that great? And that's just remove. We haven't even seen insert and you haven't even seen my exclusive Patreon video in which I show you how to achieve still more control. That's patreon.com slash deek now. Now we're going to switch from remove to insert. And here's a classic example. Notice this image in the bottom left corner as things stand now anyway, is an empty room with some ocean in the background through the windows. But if I hover over it, then you can see that this thing is suggesting that I paint in a couch and a standing lamp and a coffee table. So I'm just going to click to try this example. It doesn't really give me anything to start with except this image. So I'm just going to start a paint in here and notice my brush is set to add. That's important. And then I have selected insert. 
as by default over on the left hand side and i'll paint in this beautiful looking lamp right there and i'll, I'll just scroll down a little bit and indicate where i want the coffee table which would be right here i'm guessing and then if i wanted a rug i would put it here now the prompt i came up with is this guy uh couch you could go sofa i don't care you can do what you want floor lamp coffee table pillows i just found that as soon as i said like throw rug that i got a throw rug instead of the coffee table so i'm just going to try this out and it will take a moment the, the quality is going to vary all over the map at this point because we are still in a beta product and this actually looks not too bad i'm i'm it doesn't look hyper realistic but it's pretty good and uh, there's a floating uh coffee table i like would really want one of those please and this is a uh thing on uh kind of a foam insert thing right there i don't know what any another floating coffee table so you can you you, you get the idea that the degree of success is going to vary and of course if you don't like what you see you can click refresh but what i'm going to do is upload an entirely different image uh, again from dreams time and i'm going to select the background so i want to take this girl and i want to put her in actual real space as opposed to this more or less you know a uh, uh, uniform background so i'll just go ahead and click select background unfortunately what that does it does select her pretty well but it got rid of her jetpack i don't know if you noticed that anyway i'm gonna paste in a prompt and I came up with this guy right here. So blue, orange, purple, cloud, space, distant planets, glowing stars, generate, gall darn it. And that's going to go ahead and fill everything that's indicated by that checkerboard transparency pattern with whatever it is that Firefly comes up with. And so we get another four variations right here. It does, I, I can't stress enough that the degree of success is going to vary. But I decided at this point, well, why would you do that? Really, honestly, when you could just, you know, you, you, you have more control in the text to image module in Firefly. And then you could just bring that into Photoshop where I could do a much better job of masking the girl against that background. So here's one variation that i came up with you can see that we've got a pretty darn good mask going on so that's perfect but it's better than what we were seeing a moment ago and i also came up with this so hey you know you have in, in photoshop you you have that flexibility if you prefer and just for fun i've gone ahead and generated some different variations right here just so we have something different to look at but i you know it's kind of like well this isn't really something i might really want to do so i decided here let's come up with something that looks halfway decent and halfway decent is is i'm definitely stressing halfway at this point because the mask is looking pretty bad but let's say i want to add to this as opposed to editing the mask and kind of starting over and that kind of thing you want to start from this point right here then click done is the way it works right now and then i'll make sure the brush is set to uh, to add and i'll click on the size option and crank it up to a hundred percent that's as big as it gets and i'll just go ahead and paint in her hands because what i want to do is i want to give her dr strange hands you know just like emitting energy in the form of magic so i'll just go ahead and enter magical fiery start burst exploding in glowing rings of energy i didn't try dr strange because supposedly the, the firefly doesn't know about any of that kind of stuff it doesn't know mickey mouse it doesn't know you know the incredible hulk it, none of that stuff is going to work between you and me you can definitely try it see if you get better results or not but i'm just going to try these magical fiery star burst exploding green glowing rings oh look at that i got this effect right here that's something and i got this and this and this well now i'm between you and me i'm going to be honest with you I'm underwhelmed. And the thing that's so very frustrating about this is I previously got this effect right here, which I think is really cool. And so obviously the problem is I forgot my prompt. Now, even though Firefly is getting better about keeping track of prompts, believe you me, what you want to do, if, if you want any degree of consistency, you want to, I've got notepad open, just a text editor, doesn't matter, and just copy and paste every single one of your prompts obsessively, by the way, and that way you stand a chance of getting back to something like this. 
But let's say I want to keep this girl's backpack in the picture. So I've re-uploaded her, by the way. I'm going to click select background, by the way. Once again, that is to say. That will get rid of that cardboard backpack she had. Now I'll click. Now I can't figure out how to paint it back in. Right? If I click. If I. Ooh. I, I started painting with add. I don't want that. There's not really an undo right now. So I'll switch to subtract. I like remove better than insert as things stand now where this in painting module is concerned, but I am painting back. So I've got it set to subtract, but what I want to do is click invert so I can better see what I'm doing. And now I need to click on add and I'm going to reduce the size of my brush. Now this part's going to be a little bit tedious because I just need to kind of exactingly paste this kind of stuff in. I'm trying to paste a uh, uh, paint that is, I'm trying to paint a kind of border around all this stuff. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to make things move very quickly to the end by which I mean the end of my painting as we're seeing right here, because it's just too tedious to watch. And now I would click invert because otherwise I'm going to fill in the checkerboard area. You get that, right? So I'll click invert so that I have all of her, her, her rocket pack, but not only that, I have a little extra so that Firefly has something to work with instead of just having a really bad mask. And I'm also actually going to come down here and switch to subtract and subtract a little bit of her feet like so. So just to paint a little bit of her feet into the action so that that's part of things as well. So it's taken into account during those details are taken into account during the insertion process. And that will very likely give us better edges. You could do the same thing around the hair as well. So give it a try. You'll find, uh, you know, experiment is what I'm trying to say in my own inept way. And then I'm going to try a slightly different prompt this time around. And I will go ahead and click generate. And I will anticipate that I will get different results. And sure enough, the results are extremely different as we're seeing right here. And while not every one of them is entirely successful, not sure what's going on with that guy. That one's pretty fun and it actually stylistically matches the image itself. I think, though, I have to go with this first variation right here. And that is how you work inside it with both using remove and insert both of those modes inside the in painting module here inside Adobe Firefly. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And if you like what you've seen so far, you will want more at patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.